going to go over a procedure that you do on a new machine uh, to set the calibrate, hydraulic calibration motor um, to what speed you're going to seed at. So if you're seeding at 5 miles an hour, we're going to set this one at 5 miles an hour, for instance. First ensure the main clutch switch is switched off and engage the hydraulic remote to run fan 1. At the air seeder, turn the main on-off ball valve to off to stop oil flow to fan 1. You can refer to the control valve configurations decal located on the tank above the valves. Um, we want to go into the monitor if we're going to have to disable the fan so that we don't get a fan alarm. So we have to go into page 2 on our monitor and number 4 is our fan settings. And we'll have to go and turn both fan 1 and fan 2 and set them to no. Okay, okay, fan two. Okay, so once you have that set, then we want to get back to our main screen uh, where we have speed so we can see what, what speed the motor is turning at. And then on the tank, you'll need a 3 8 wrench to loosen off the jam nut on the needle valve. And by adjusting this, we're going to see that speed change. Okay, so start up your hydraulic motor. And then you're going to adjust the needle valve. You'll need somebody in the tractor to uh, help you to set the speed. Just turn it till you get it to your desired rate of 5. Okay, so we have our rate. That's a one-time thing. You only have to do this once unless you change tractors or whatever, but this uh, you don't have to do this all the time. Just a one-time. Okay, so once your uh, speed is set, make sure you lock your uh, jam nut. And then we're going to have to go back to the cab uh, and reset the monitor so that we uh, enable the fan alarms again. So we'll go to fan 1 and re-enable it and also fan 2 and re-enable it once you have them both enabled hit OK and we're good to go you can start seeding or calibrate whatever you want to do Today we're going to do the calibration of a 6000 tank and a 591 monitor. First ensure the main clutch switch is switched off and engage the hydraulic remote to run fan 1. At the air seeder, turn the main on-off ball valve to off to stop oil flow to fan 1. You can refer to the control valve configurations decal located on the tank above the valves. Uh, one of the first things we want to do is take our bucket, make sure that we uh, tear the scale so that it takes into account the weight of the bucket. With our new digital scale, we have the ability to do that. So first turn it on, um, place the bucket on the scale, um, and then press the tear button and hold it, the zero button, and it'll uh, go to zero. Once you take the scale or the bucket off the scale, it's going to give you a reading on the scale of the weight of the bucket. So in this case, we have 5.7 stored in the memory. Now, whenever we put the bucket on, uh, the weight starts at zero. Next thing we're going to have to know is which metering auger we have in our tank. Uh, in this case, you can get it on the right-hand side of the tank. Uh, it's stamped into the into the auger and also what um, range your transmission is in. So you have the ability to be in in three different ranges, low, intermediate and high. Uh, today we're going to calibrate wheat so we have it in high range already. You also need your red book, um, your rate chart book 
So what we're going to do today, we're going to look through the book till you find your wheat. And remember there are two different um, rate charts in here, the imperial and the metric. So make sure you have the one that you want. So we're going to do imperial. Uh, we found wheat, hard red spring. We have the single flight auger in the front tank. And that's the one we're going to calibrate. Uh, we want to do 100 pounds we're going to calibrate for. So we look on our rate chart for 100 pounds uh, in high range. Uh, the, we should set our transmission. Our initial setting will be 31. So we just adjust it by using our actuator control till we get to 31. So there we're about 31. Before we start a calibration, we want to make sure that our metering auger is charged uh, so that we don't have any uh, revolutions on that auger that, um, that don't have product in them. Before we do that though, we want to make sure that we take our, our metering tube off of our uh, airline and put it into the drop tube so that we can collect it below in the, in the bucket. So we just move it from this over to here and then we're ready to charge our metering auger. We also need to now get the monitor ready so that we can calibrate. So we'll go back to the cab of the tractor and get the monitor into calib uh, ready to calibrate. So we'll have to go to screen three, uh, push this bottom button here till you get to the screen that has three um, sensor setup and calibration and then we'll move down to our application rate calibration. We'll open up that screen. Now we have uh, our shafts are here ready to calibrate and also we'll have to put our uh, box into calibrate in the cab as well. And we want to turn on the tanks that we're going to be calibrating. We're just calibrating tank one, but if you were doing three or four tanks, you'd turn all those switches on that you need power to. Okay, so once we have the power there, then we'll be able to turn our clutches on here to uh, charge our metering auger. So now we want to get it charged up before we do an actual calibration. Okay, so we have product flowing through. We have it calibr uh, charged. We'll just put an empty bucket in. We have to go back now and reset in the monitor to make sure that we are back to zero with our revolutions so that we don't count those. So we'll just hit the done button to reset. Now we have zero again, so we're ready to uh, start our calibration. Whenever you're calibrating, make sure you get a good size sample. Uh, we recommend 15 pounds and above, uh, but if you fill your tub about two thirds full, it'd be a good sample. Again, the larger the sample, the more accurate your calibration is going to be. Whenever we have enough product in the tub, we're going to shut it off using the hydraulic calibration motor. And then, if you are doing more than one tank, then shut, shut the tank that has the full tub first, and then you can continue on until you get all your tubs with the proper amount in. Uh, but shut it off using the hydraulic motor, not the clutch. Okay, so once you have your product, bring it over to your scale. Make sure your scale is turned on. Put it on, we have a weight. 32.7 pounds. Okay, so go back to the monitor. We're going to select shaft one. And it brings us into a screen where we can uh, enter the weight. So we go to the highlighted box for weight. <clears throat> we want 32.7. Once you have your weight in, you have to hit this enter key with the arrow on it to get it to go in properly. 
and now we see we have a nominal rate of 120.6 pounds uh, we were going for uh, 100 so there is a formula in your in the book um, to determine what we should reset this actuator at calibration manual there is a formula uh, usually on page 2.2 but generally uh, in that area that shows you how to calculate um, the new transmission setting using the old transmission setting and your weight so the transmission setting that you desired is equal to your desired rate times transmission setting divided by the calibration weight obtained so in this uh, instance we want 100 pounds our transmission setting was 31 so it's 100 times 31 and divided by the calibration rate obtained which was 120.6 so when you do the math you come out with a number of 25.83 okay so we're going to go we're going to set the monitor at approximately or the transmission at approximately 26. Okay, and we will redo our calibration. Now that we have our calculation finished, we can go back to the monitor, reset it so we can run a second calibration uh, to verify our, our settings. So we go back to the monitor, um, we just hit the OK to come out of that hit the done button on the calibrate screen it brings us back out and then we just have to go back in again and it resets everything so that we can now run another calibration so again we'll put another empty container under and we're ready to to run our calibration this time it's going to be at at uh, transmission setting of 26. Okay, again, once you have your product, make sure your scale is powered up before you hang your, hang your bucket on. Then hang your bucket, get your weight. Okay, we have a weight of 29.4. So we're going to go back to our monitor, uh, press the shaft one button, and we want to enter 29.4. and enter that in and we have a weight of 104.6 pounds so we're very close to our desired rate of 100 pounds so w once you start seating then you can adjust that manually from the cab uh, by bumping your rate up with your uh, in in cab actuator control uh, to get it to the rate that you want okay so once you get done again you're gonna have to come back Take your calibration tube, put it back onto your distribution line so that put your clamp back on so that you're ready to go seating. Otherwise, you're going to do some fancy strip seating. Also, uh, remember to turn the clutches on here. Uh, if these clutches are not on, whenever you go back to your cab, even though you have the the clutch switch is on in the tank they won't turn on unless they're on here as well so make sure those are all turned back on as well you have to put your ball valve back into position so that your fans can run and then go to the other side on the other side put your selector valve in the position to run your fans also in the cab you're also going to have to go take it out of cal calibrate mode uh, and again turn on the switches that you're uh, going to be using when you're seating as well.